Hi everybody and welcome to the first 3D tutorial on 3DPad. Um, I'm just going to run you through the basics of how 3DS Max works, how to navigate the interface. Um, hopefully this will prepare you for the um, 3D Act series that we're going to be starting soon and then followed by the How To Dalek series. Um, right, so first things first, you are going to need a three-buttoned mouse for this, so if you don't have a scroll wheel on your mouse, you're sort of out of luck, really. Um, but basically, just a quick thing I like to do when I start up is you have these four different viewports. Now, you can tell which one's active by this orange border. Um, I tend to always stick with this one just by force of habit. Um, to make this one full screen, you just want to hit Alt and W on your keyboard, and that toggles the full screen for that viewport on and off. Um, now then, zooming out. Zooming out's fairly simple. Um, basically, just scroll your scroll wheel. Now, if nothing happens, basically just tap your middle mouse in this area anywhere, just to make sure that this is properly active. And then just scroll in and out, and it'll center it around the, the point of the mouse. So if my point of the mouse is in the center of this and I scroll out, it'll scroll in and out to that point. If I do it to this corner, it'll scroll into the corner. Same over here. Um, to rotate, you want to hold Alt, hold down the middle mouse button, and just drag your mouse. That'll rotate your viewport, which is... It's quite handy, because doing it this way, it will center the pivot around anything you have selected. Um, whereas just using this, it does it around the center of space, as opposed to the center of what you're actually looking at. Um, to drag the viewport, it's very simple. Just click down your middle mouse button alone, move your mouse. And again, all these tools put together. It actually makes for a very, very simple, very quick um, navigation of the interface. Um, now, to make something, a lot of people sort of trip up on this, because what they do is if they want to create a box, they highlight box over here, and they click, and they drag, and then they drag it up, and they have their box, and they think, great, now I want to select this box, so they might go and drag over it, but then they keep drawing more boxes and boxes, and this just goes on endlessly. Um, so basically what you need to remember to do is click and drag, and let go of your mouse. That draws the shape in two dimensions, but since this is a 3D package, we need to draw it in 3D. And since the box is a 3D shape, you just drag it up, and that add, adds height to it. And you can see over on the right-hand side that the... Um, measurement of the height is going up and down as I drag my mouse. And then just, again, click, and then that will stop adjusting that particular shape. Now if you want to completely exit this, you can either click on box up here, or just right click in, in empty space, and that will just leave you with what you have created, and you won't be able to have any more, you just highlight there. Um, now another place where people fall down is if they're in a two-dimensional viewport like this. Um, now this is the top view, which should probably run through the keyboard shortcuts at the minute. Um, right, this is the grid. Now, personally, I hate working with the grid on. So just tap G for grid, and that will turn it off. T on the keyboard takes you to the top. F takes you to the front. L takes you to the left. And then P puts it in perspective. Um, but again, you can adjust your own, your own viewing angle by rotating the camera. So I'm just in top here. Now, if I want to create a cylinder, everybody knows what a cylinder looks like. So if I just drag it out there, people think, right, I have my cylinder there. Now, because we're looking at it in a two-dimensional viewport, when we drag up and down, nothing visually happens. But if you look over on the height at the side of the menu, um, you can see that the measurement is actually still adjusting there. So we are still currently editing the shape. So if we were to right-click to exit the edit mode for this particular shape, the whole thing will disappear. Um, now this is because the shape was incomplete, um, not all of the parameters had been set. So if you're in this view, you just drag it out, let go, drag again, left click, and then right click. And then as you can see, we're left with our shape. Um, a couple more tips just while we're, while we're here, which will probably be useful, um, is to use these tools up here, you have your move tool, your rotate tool, and your scale tool. Now, for any tutorials that I do, unless I mention otherwise, your scale tool icon should always look like this. Um, because if you tap the scale tool keyboard short key several times, as you can see, it changes. Which adjusts how this shape will actually scale. So we always want it like this. 
Um, now the sh keyboard shortcut for move is W. As you can see up here, that's now our move tool activated. E for rotate, as you can see up here again, and then R for scale. Now all of these keys are next to each other on the keyboard, so you don't have to keep looking for like M for move and R for rotate. So this is actually easy once you get your head around what the different letters stand for. Um, now in any of the tools, as you can see, we have these different um, controllers for the different um, dimensions. So if we were wanting to scale this shape in every dimension, we would hover our mouse over the center so all of them are highlighted, click and then drag it out. If we were just wanting it to do it in these two, we would hover over that line, drag it out like that, same for this one. Now if we were just wanting to do it in one dimension, we would hover over the end of that line and drag it out. Same goes for any of the other dimensions. Exact same goes for the move tool. If you want to move it straight in the x-axis, you just click on the x-arrow, drag it that way, straight up and down in the z. Same goes for the y. Now if you want to move it in two of them, in this you have these... Um, squares connecting the different axes. So just make sure that whichever one you want to move it in, that particular one is highlighted in yellow. Which can get a bit confusing because if you tell somebody, you know, click on the blue one but then it turns yellow, then they claim that there's not one there. So just just try and remember, you know, that you can move them in particular axis. You don't have to try and freehand it to get it where you want it. You can just drag it straight out and then everything's everything's perfectly square. Now the rotate tool, this one's actually the one that most people have trouble with because you have to be so accurate with your mouse placement. Now I've had people in the past that when I say you know try and rotate it 90 degrees this way they'll hover near the line but not quite on it and then as you can see that just ends up rotating the shape in complete freedom it's not restricted to any particular axis. Um, so again, make sure that whichever one you want to do it in, you're hovering over that line, and it will do it in that one axis. Um, now we have some more tools up here which are very useful. So the first thing I'm going to want you to do um, is hit W and then S. Now as you can see, when we hover over um, anything within our scene, we will get these little yellow points, and the center of our move tool has turned to a circle. Now basically what this will do is it will snap it to whatever we tell this tool to do. So if you just, to, to start this off, if you just right click up here and make sure that all of these are unticked and that vertex is ticked because that's the one that we're going to be using most often. Um, under options here we have an option down here, enable access constraints, we want that ticked um, because in 3ds Max 2014 by default this is not ticked and this this leaves a lot of people at a dead end when they're trying to snap in a certain axis, it just it, it can mess up your work and it's it, it makes things harder in, in the long run. So just make sure that that one's ticked and then you're okay to exit this menu. Um, now the rotate tool also has um, a sort of controller like this where if you look in the bottom of the screen now that's just rotating by no particular set step. Um, but if we hit A on our keyboard for angle this will be highlighted. And as you can see here we can set how far the steps are. So at the minute if I rotate my shape here it will rotate it in five degrees in in set steps. Now as I've said before that's adjustable which which comes in handy. Um, another quick thing which which is helpful is say we've rotated this in loads of different axes and it's not straight anymore it's not square and we want that to be back flat. Now providing that you haven't grouped this with anything else and that this object is still as it was when it was made in terms of um, the grouping or parenting or whatever. Um, you can actually set it back to its start and rotation and positions. So down here we have these three measurements which are the X, Y and Z axis for the rotation. As you can see when I do the move tool it sets it to different measurements because it's in a different place. But at the minute we'll just stick with the rotate tool. Um, if you right click on these two arrows here it will set that down to the lowest standard it can which in this case is zero. Um, it, it's very quick workflow, it saves you sort of dragging up and down or highlighting it and typing in zero and hitting enter. It's just a case of right clicking on these two arrows here. Um, now going back to the move tool and saying about dragging something in a certain axis, um, if you were wanting to make a duplicate of this object you would hold shift and then click on 
whichever axis you want and drag this in. So we want to do it in the Y just for this example. So holding shift, click and drag, and as you can see, that's created a duplicate. Then we get this window here. Um, now I'll run you through these different object types. We have a copy, which means that this object is a perfect replica of this one, but it's free to its own transformations and adjustments. Instance will mean that anything that is done to one of these shapes will happen on the other one. And a reference is, it's sort of like an un uneditable object. It's, it's just there is almost like a placeholder. Um, I tend to use copy to be honest. Another useful factor about this window is the number of copies. So to save you thinking, right, I've, I've dragged this, let's just say 10 units out, and then I've got to drag the other one 10 units out, and the other one 10 units out. That can become very, very um, time constricting. So if we just say that we want to have six more copies of this, set that up at six and click OK, and it will do it in the exact adjustment that you did the first one in, which believe me, does come in handy when you're doing sort of, I don't know, let's just say you're doing a brick wall or something and you want them to be spaced equally. Comes in very handy for that. Um, I just switch the grid back on here so we can see where we are. Um, nine times out of ten we are going to be using um, standard primitives to construct our things. So, just standard geometry, standard primitives, and then you have your your options here. But then there is nothing we can do to the shape. I mean, we can adjust the length segments and the width segments and etc. But that doesn't really allow much control over what we're doing. So if you were to right click and convert to, you want it to be an editable poly. Um, now this brings up a lot more options where we can actually um, adjust the faces individually. We can completely warp this object. We can um, We can add more detail to it using the various tools. Um, I won't go into these in too much detail right now because I'll go through each of them step by step in the in the relative tutorials. Um, but if you're wanting a quick task to try and get used to this interface, um, here's what I like to try you to do. Um, if you create a box and then convert that to an editable poly Select the top face and bevel, click the tick, and then click the face again to exit the editable mode. Um, if you just give that a shot, then you're pretty much ready to start along with the tutorials. Um, if you have any questions, just feel free to post a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it. Um, but yeah, I hope you find this helpful, and I will see you next time.